So, uh, so okay, uh, I'll start. Uh, this one is about uh, to deploy a Prochal program on uh, AWS Lambda. Uh, actually, it's my um, my personal project, which is uh, retweet uh, over <coughs> uh, Stack Overflow questions to uh, tweet. So uh, it's the account. If you are interested, you can <laughs> follow. So uh, it's about all about closure and the closure script questions. Uh, is, it, is it yours? Hmm? Is it yours or? Oh, what do you mean? Mine. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm the only maintainer. Maybe. Oh, okay. So some backgrounds. Uh, first is uh, a Twitter bot. Then uh, uh, what it uh, previously I put it on DigitalOcean, and also it uses a cron job to run every two hours. So I pay twenty dollar instance, uh, both my blocks and uh, the bot itself. Uh, later something changed. <laughs> I, I I have my my children came to the world. So I really no time to maintain my blocks. So uh, I don't want to pay the $20 anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, I need to move it to a cheaper solution. So I saw um, AWS Lambda. So I'm thinking uh, how difficult to move a closure code to AWS. Actually, if you see um, the code here, um, previously, it's uh, Java run the job. So <coughs> then I uh, do some research and find actually it's quite easy to do so for the to move all my codes into uh, AWS Lambda. So there are around five uh, problems need to be solved. The first is uh, uh, Java interop. Um, because uh, AWS don't have a, a native closure solution for us, but it has a Java solution. So closure provides us um, very strong ways to interop with uh, Java. So that's not a problem. Then also with some help of the AOT. Then uh, what my board do now is I uh, every day, uh, every two hours, it will query the Stack Overflow API, then to get all the list. But I, I saved uh, last update time, so it only query from two ranges. Uh, so that that's a problem because in my instance, I save it in a file. But move to AWS, I need to use AWS solutions. I cannot do like in my local file system. And also for my credentials, um, uh, also are some AWS problem. I, I will talk later. So we, I will go through these solutions one by one. Uh, any questions? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so first is uh, Java in top. Um, <clears throat> I don't talk too much about how you call a, a Java function or use something. I think um, for here, what we are use actually is a gen uh, class. What it provides us is it helps us to, um, what do they say, to um, create some classes um, for, we, we can specify the name, also the methods. So for example, in my case, uh, I, I want to uh, uh, make it uh, a Java class called Tweet Publisher uh, with some namespace. Uh, also, I, I specify these methods, uh, publish something. And uh, then in my namespace, I only need to uh, define this method as dash uh, publish. So uh, Clojure will solve everything for me. It will generate a class with this uh, package name and the class name, and also include this uh, publish method. Um, here, I only mention a, a bit. Actually, this publish previously, I if you are using the AWS Lambda, um, it will 
uh, give you the events, um, it's passed it into a map. Uh, what I, I, when I first uh, am doing this, I use publish strings and a string. I, I want to get the event in a string format, then pass myself. But I failed. <laughs> AWS do the default way. So you, you, you can only, if you need some events, you, you need the maps to, to get the map, then call it to get the things. So any question here? <laughs> Why is it dash publish and not just publish? No, that, that's the default um, naming convention by Clojure. So if you want the methods here, you need to use a dash. It's used by uh, Java, but in the namespace itself, you need to specify a dash. And also, if you don't care the package name, you, you also can use the uh, namespace uh, the keyword, the gen class, instead of you call it directly. This one provides me the um, possibility to rename the uh, package name of the class. So you can see my, sorry. Actually, this is the code I moved to uh, Lambda, <coughs> and uh, I did not change any of my logic, just uh, add this part. Then it works immediately. So uh, then I need to mention about AOT. AOT is called ahead of time compilation. I'm not sure how many of you use it. Uh, it's um, it's also a very cool function. Actually, it's export. Um, it will compile your closure code into the Java classes. So in my last job, we use it to improve our um, startup time and also some performance. But if you are using the closure dynamic class load and you need some dy dynamic function, then you, you may need to use it carefully. So you can see uh, after I um, upjar my codes, actually uh, it will generate the uh, classes uh, below the CLJ SO AWS Lambda, which I specified as the name. And also it will have compiled all my closure codes. Okay. Which one? How do you set up? AOT. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, let me show. <laughs> uh, it's very easy. Um, if you go to my project, it's uh, on GitLab. Uh, so uh, only uh, normally we only do it when we up a jar. So when, when you set uh, AOT all, actually it will do everything for you. And also, you, you can have other ways. For example, you can specify in your uh, namespace, namespace function. Or you can set AOT which to give you the namespace, which you want to do the AOT. Um, it will find uh, all, the, uh, all the dependencies and do all the things for you. OK, any question? No. <laughs> So that's um, made me very uh, comfortable. Actually, I don't need to touch any of my existing codes and the logics. Then I can move it very quickly from the command line to the AWS. So uh, <clears throat> that's the second uh, problem I mentioned. That is the uh, S3 access. Um, I, I did not use uh, the database or, or something. I, I just want to uh, save a timestamp, uh, like a, a line of the files. 
So I come to the S3 um, solutions. Um, so um, Amazonica is a great library. I'm not sure whether you use it. Uh, it's, I think it covers 70 percent of the functions of the uh, AWS uh, SDK. So you, you almost can do everything with this in your repo. You even can run your AWS to don't don't use the console. So you can build your EC2. You can access your S3. You can do um, almost uh, <coughs> anything normally you do in your consoles. So you, uh, that's very cool. Um, so uh, then, uh, you, you may encounter some problem with uh, when you use um, Amazonica. Um, what I encounter is the uh, dependency problems because it implements almost all the um, Amazon functions. So, but I only need to S3. So what, what I try to do is I when when I um, re set the dependency of, of the Amazonica, I will exclude the AWS and Java SDK, DynoDB, and uh, uh, to uh, add the dependence separately in um, myself. So it will, um, how do you say, minimize your jar also. <coughs> Otherwise, it will download all the uh, Amazon SDK jars in, into your, where you do the package. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, and also the codes. They use hot, hot spot a bit slow. The API also very um, clear and simple. Uh, like wh when I do is I just uh, put a, um, put an object like or what, then uh, get the object when when I need it. Okay. So uh, any questions about? Okay. Any tips on how to come up with a good set of pages? Sorry? Suppose when you're dealing with Amazonica or any other big monolithic library, do you have any tips on how to come up with good exclusions? Uh, okay, uh, actually th there are two kinds of exclusions. Uh, normally when we are doing the closure projects, we, we, we can set a global exclusions. Like we, we, we hope every project we, like we excludes the closure itself. Because in, in our project, we will specify uh, to use Clojure 1.9 or 1.8. But many uh, libraries, they may not uh, update to the latest one. They are using some uh, old versions. So it will give you some troubles. So um, we, we will exclude the Clojure itself. And also some uh, logging libraries. We, we find it give you a lot of trouble in the comments libraries. So uh, that, that's, the, that's when, when you're doing some projects, that's the thing you may consider to do. You, you're doing some global exclusions of the uh, closure, some logging, and the comments. Yeah. Not, not sure if you're asking about a uh, like lane has this tree function. So you can list all the potential yes. conflicts, and then you can resolve the tree, and you can, you can basically go. Yeah. Uh, that, that's one. Normally, I only use. Uh, I find something does not work. <laughs> uh, I, I encounter some problem. For example, some uh, Jackson library. The some codes uh, library use some very old one, so uh, caused my code totally broken. So I, I need to uh, do it. Normally, when, when you uh, encounter such kind of problem, you can uh, to run the tree or use a bootshoe dash d to find all, all these conflicts. Then to uh, solve one by one. Uh, but normally you don't need to. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, any other questions on this? Okay. Okay. Uh, this one is about confi uh, credentials. Um, <coughs> actually, previously, I do is I export my credentials uh, in the uh, instance uh, machine instance to as an uh, environment variable. Uh, AWS um, also provides you such things. You can set in the console. You say, I, I need this uh, environment variables. So when it brings up the lambda function, it will um, inject or, or export all these environment variables for you. So, uh, but when you are using Clojure, uh, we, we, uh, we all know there's a great library, the environ. So, <coughs> so for example, this one is for the Twitter um, OAuth. So I, I can use the uh, environ uh, my uh, variable name. It will uh, use the small case, but in the backend, normally uh, we in the we use the shell format. We will use the uppercase one, but um, environ will automatically uh, change. Uh, it will um, use the uppercase. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. Any question on this? Uh -huh. What do you do when the token takes fire? Huh? What do you do when the Actually, it's quite long. Uh, I did not encounter the problem yet. Uh, because this one is an API token. It's quite long. Mm, I think I, I already run it uh, one and a half year. Never expire. <laughs> OK, uh, th that's all about uh, closure things. Uh, so any question on this? No, <laughs> OK. Uh, this one is about the um, uh, Lambda thing, uh, the AWS, which I want to mention a bit. Um, it, the first is um, the command, which you can use to uh, create your function, delete your function, and uh, update your uh, function codes. So you can see, you can set the function name, its row. Um, row is a bit uh, uh, important one because it will impact your function's capability to uh, interact with your uh, AWS infrastructure. So uh, when I, I set this lambda exec row, um, it will do the, uh, can access my S3 and uh, to access my CloudWatch. So if you did not uh, set it properly, you, you will have some uh, access problems. For example, you, you cannot uh, put or uh, update your object in S3 or, or something. So that one, when you, you are doing this, you need to uh, pay attention to it. Any question? <laughs> for example, this timeout is set a uh, uh, timeout time for every run, every function run. So when, when it's uh, ex um, more than 10 seconds, uh, you will, it will take as an uh, error. Uh, think no, your, your function does not work. So it will give you some uh, error logs and uh, um, some error statistics. You can see the handler is the um, Java classes and uh, the method which I uh, use gen class uh, to generate it before. Uh, this one is about CloudWatch. Uh, that's the thing I used to replace the Chrome job. So um, <coughs> Amazon Fun, uh, uh <coughs> Lambda will not uh, cannot run automatically, so um, to simulate uh, the Chrome job, I, I need to uh, use the uh, Amazon Cloud Watch. You can put some rule to run something like every two hours, every one hour. Um, then you can add the permission. Say I, I need to call uh, <coughs> these functions. Then you put the target. Then it will. Uh, it will run as a cron job to access your function, so you can do something. You, you don't need to uh, deploy your own, to put into the uh, machine instance. Uh, you can call it from the uh, function. So uh, <coughs> the benefits, now I pay zero. 
so I don't <laughs> need to pay anymore because Amazon give me a quota uh, much higher than uh, what I used. And also it give me very nice uh, counsel to see all my settings. Uh, after, uh, for example, if you, after I finish my settings, I can see uh, all my, my, my Lambda function can, um, could be triggered by the CloudWatch events. It can access, uh, can generate uh, logs and uh, can access my S3. So I, I can see all my uh, function and its structures. And also, it also can give me a very nice dashboard. So uh, after I deployed my function, it will uh, show me, uh, for example, uh, when it's been called, uh, when how, what's the duration it has been run, and uh, how many errors encountered. Normally, it tries three times. Uh, then it fail, then failed your task. Yeah. So you you can all see all these in charts. And also, you can go to the logs. It, it will list all your detailed logs. Um, OK, that, that's uh, all <laughs> about my talk. Yeah. Uh, any questions? <laughs> so actually, any thoughts you, you want to? You can also try some, such kind of uh, drops you can put to Amazon AWS. Are you on uh, some kind of a free trial right now? Uh, no, my free trial period has ended. But Amazon uh, Lambda now, I, I'm not sure whether it's a promotion. It will give you, I, I think, quite, quite some. Uh, they do that for celebrities. Hmm? For celebrities, they do that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, in normal use case, uh, I don't think you will use up it. Okay, that's all. Thank you.